You are listening to the Love and Money Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, Cassie Robinson. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, okay, I'd like to start off by asking you to tell us who you are and what do you do? Okay, so um, literally, I'm Casey Robinson. Um, so my Instagram is uh, Pink Porch Properties, if you guys follow me on that. Um, but what I do is mainly real estate. Um, majority of what you'll see from me is mobile home investing. I started into mobile home investing when I got into my real estate um, process, I guess you can say. So um, yeah, it's all about real estate for me. It's all about um, everything I can do in real estate, mobile homes, buying land, um, lots tax liens, um, all of the above. <laughs> okay, Cassie. Um, what is your background? My, it's crazy that you asked me that. My background is not nowhere near real estate. None of my family come from a real estate background. I don't come from a real estate background. I actually come from a fashion background. I graduated with a bachelor's in uh, fashion uh, merchandising and marketing. So it's more so the business side of fashion. Um, literally that's what I thought I was going to be doing like my whole entire life. Um, love fashion, love the business side, moved to New York, worked for a major, huge fashion house, Louis Vuitton for five years. Wow. Um, basically did their operations, did their merchandising, worked for Tory Burch. So I was just in fashion for years. Um, I did a lot of event planning with them and things of that nature. And basically when I moved back to Atlanta, I would have never thought I would have gotten into real estate. Um, but it was a conversation I had in 20. 2019 at a barbecue and that was that is what led me to get into real estate so <laughs> okay um so could tell us more how did you decide to do mobile homes um so basically um when i first decided to even start that conversation at that barbecue when i first decided to even start um venturing out into real estate it was about traditional real estate so it was about like single family homes commercial um, you know, apartments, things of that nature. And what happened was the more and more that I communicated with this individual um, and talked for weeks about real estate, he was like venture out to different um, other aspects in the real estate realm. So I started just, you know, researching like we normally do going online, um, you know, going on online, um, social media, Facebook, Instagram, things of that sort. Um, and then I came across mobile home investing. I just was like, what is this? What is mobile home investing? Like, it was just so weird to me <laughs> because I've never been to a mobile home park and I really don't come from the background of mobile homes. So I was like, what is this? Um, right. And basically along of my ventures of um, researching mobile homes, I got into this webinar. It was like a 30 minute webinar. And basically the webinar was discussing mobile homes, how you can make money in mobile homes, how the mobile home investing is like such a secret. Um, in real estate, people don't really know about it. They don't talk about it. And so on that same webinar, um, we were able to go into a chat. When we went into the chat, um, it was a couple of ladies in there saying, okay, well, drop your city where you're from. So it was probably about me and probably about eight or nine other women who dropped their city that they were from Atlanta. So we all decided, hey, let's just send our emails over. Let's send over our contact information. Let's link up. And we're all new to this. Let's see what we can do. And it literally went from there. We all met up in Macon. Georgia at a mobile home park. The mobile home owner was there and that's unusual. He sat there and talked to us for about two hours about mobile home investing and literally I was like, I'm sold. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> interesting because I'm not familiar with mobile homes because, you know, I'm from the city. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, oh. exactly. So, um, Cassie, what was your, your first purchase like? Um, it was crazy because um knowing like i'm basically jumping out on a limb i'm risking you know even though i wanted to be in real estate i know this is what i was wanting to do um just putting up that much money and it wasn't really a lot literally my first purchase was seventy five hundred dollars but to most people that's living on you know check to check or they're living like on a on a small income you know from their job that seems like a lot to risk, not knowing if, it's, if you're going to be successful in it or if you're going to lose your money. So um, it was a little nervous for me. My mind was like going all over the place. But at the same time, I was like, listen, if I'm going to jump in, I'm, I'm a heavy risk taker too. So listen, okay. don't mind me. Okay. Most people don't, they're not willing to play those games, you know, and, and take it all. But so um, literally like when I put in that money, 
um, after hearing all the knowledge and all the information and everything that I could basically just research for like a couple of weeks, um, it just kind of like fell in my lap. And the first mobile home was actually from a word of mouth um, mm -hmm. mobile home. So that, that, that was a good thing too. The lady who actually told me about the mobile home had already purchased two mobile homes prior, her and her husband. So when they purchased those two mobile homes, they were already working on them, remodeling them. You know, they had already like, I think they were already in the process of like flipping one deal. Um, and so they kind of like, you know, smoothed me into the process of buying this mobile home. And like, you know, with all my history and all my background that I've been researching for weeks, I was just like, okay, I'm sold. Not only that, the first mobile home I purchased was a property manager, like a property manager of the park. It was her mobile home. She was actually moving to another park so therefore that kind of also like double sold me because of the fact of I sat out there with her for an hour talking about just mobile home investing in general. She had been apart for probably 10 plus years. You see what I'm saying? So that made it, that made the experience um, not so overwhelming because I was getting as much information I could. So I just said, you know what, I'm just going to go with it. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. I was going to ask you about the price. How much it cost to buy? My first one was seventy five hundred, and don't get it wrong, seventy five hundred. I always say when people are starting into mobile home investing, at least look at coming in with five thousand dollars, five thousand dollars for the minimum, and that's purchasing the mobile home. Um, if you can get it at a good deal, of course, and then of course renovating the mobile home. And we're not going in there doing like full renovations. We're doing like cosmetic work and things of that nature. But um, this mobile home was seventy five hundred. The mobile home was in good condition. I really didn't have to do a lot to it. Not only that, it was on a corner lot um, in that basically she had a lot of landscaping. She took very good care of the front and the back. It came with a shed. So it was other additions, which led it to being that cost and me, me and her working out uh, the price point. So, but you don't have to necessarily pay that um, when you're finding a mobile home. Like I said, I suggest $5,000. A lot of times you can go in lower. You know, it just depends on the relationship that you've built with property managers or with sellers that you find that are really, really anxious to sell their home. So it just depends. Okay, um, that's interesting. And so for your first purchase, was your plan to flip it or to buy and hold? You know what? My plan was actually for my first purchase, I was just, it was crazy because I got my family involved. Some of them were saying, listen, just buy and hold. Some of them were saying, heck no, flip that thing because <laughs> you want to go ahead and get more capital, you know, to invest in other deals. So um, after thinking about it, I was like, you know what? Flipping is the ultimate goal for this first mobile home because of course you gain more capital and then you go ahead and push that money into something else, right? And um, literally like after doing a little bit of the work, after seeing where, like just, just knowing what type of mobile home I had, um, it just made sense for me to do a long-term um, buy and hold situation. And um, literally, after that first buy and hold, I have continued every mobile home I got to buy and hold. It's crazy. <laughs> like okay. literally, I don't flip. Mm -hmm. I would flip. I don't flip. But all my mobile homes, all my multiple mobile homes are all seller financed. All of them. Okay. So. Um, can you describe seller financing for people who are not familiar with that term? Yes. Seller financing is basically when myself as the owner of that mobile home is basically financing the home for the individual that's purchasing it. So I set up a contract with them. Um, I'm basically the bank pretty much, you know, they're not going out to get outsourced money from anywhere else. They don't have to worry about that. They're setting up a contract with me as the owner. We're putting it on, um, on, a, on, on terms, whether that's five years, eight years, 10 years or more. Um, and they're putting down a large down payment. Of course, everything is with interest. And they are just paying for that mobile home over the amount of terms that we agreed upon. Okay. So basically, so the other person is the bank. So you're not taking out any loans. I'm the bank. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, you see what I'm saying? I'm the bank. So literally the other person doesn't have to take out any loans. You see what I'm saying? Right. Their contract and their deal is basically done with me. So I'm the bank. I'm just financing it for them, even though I own the home. Okay. Get it? <laughs> well, like for the people that's listening, seller finance. <laughs> yeah, seller finance. Yes. And I'm going to just make a point to, I want to say in terms of seller financing, if anybody is interested in actually keeping the home for long-term, 
um, a mobile home. I just want to tell you the differences between seller financing and renting. So seller financing, just some points, just some quick points for between those two. Seller financing basically is the person is in a contract, in a long-term contract to purchase that home. They know upfront that they are buying that home over a certain amount of term, a certain amount of months, correct? Which means that you as the owner, which is me, I would not have to, um, you know, deal with any maintenance issues. If something were to happen in that home, I would not be responsible for that. They would be responsible for that. You see what I'm saying? Um, and then in terms of renting, it's a whole different process with that, that if I'm a, if, if they're renting, basically I am their landlord. So therefore that if any repairs were to come, I would have to take care of those. Um, also with renting, um, literally year after year, um, I can up the rent, um, just different various, you know, things when it comes to renting as opposed to seller financing. It's more so seller financing, you're locked in. Okay, so I'm going to beat a dead horse. Okay, <laughs> say, <laughs> say, say you are brand new to mobile homes. You've never seen a mobile home before. You don't even know what it is. And so say that you want to buy a mobile home. This is your first time and you want to do seller financing. Say you have five thousand uh, dollars cash. Okay. Okay. And so, this is your first time ever going in. You never bought a mobile home before. Okay. So, describe exactly what is happening between you and the other person when you are buying this mobile home with your five thousand dollars. So you're basically saying that you have five thousand dollars to spend. You are the buyer, correct? Yes. You're the buyer. So you have your $5,000 to spend and I am selling you the home. So one, the $5,000, of course, is not going to be enough to purchase the home if you're going to go through seller financing, you know? So one, we're going to work out, we're not even going to work out. I'm going to tell you exactly how much the home is, okay? Once I tell you how much the home is, then you will, therefore, um, and then I will tell you the deposit as well. If I tell you your deposit is the full 5,000, there's your 5,000 right there, right? Okay, so then once I tell you how much the home is over a certain amount of period, just say we go in for five years, 60 months, okay? I'm gonna tell you how much the home is, tell you how much your interest is. I'm gonna tell you how much your down deposit is. You're going to therefore give me the deposit. You're going to sign over, you're going to sign the contract of the 60 month terms after you look over it, agree with everything, whether you it's whether it's $25,000, $30,000, whatever the home costs within those five years, plus you're agreeing to the interest rate. What did I do? 8% interest, 10% interest. The whole entire total would be there. And basically, you're signing into that, you're locked into that full five year 60 months term of purchasing the home okay you get what i'm saying okay cassie how long did it take for you to do the first flip how long did it take you for you to actually find it and then flip it how long did it take for me to find a home um my first home was a couple of years ago so therefore um the market wasn't as saturated homes were you can get homes i mean homes were popping up every single week you know literally so um it wasn't as saturated as it as it is today um but um it took me i don't know maybe about two to three weeks to even find the home after i went ahead and remodeled the home did a few upgrades to it it took about i say about two and a half weeks just for us to go in there and do the upgrades um and mind you the first handyman that i actually got to do these upgrades because this is not going to be everybody's situation um I actually did the work with him. So that's the reason why it took a little bit long, a little bit of a longer process. Um, a lot of times people are just hiring handymans or they might get a contract or whoever they get and they're just doing the work solely themselves. My handyman was actually a, a teachable person. He knew that this was my first time getting into this business. So he said, hey, I really wanna show you the ropes. So, so he taught me a lot of things along the way. So that's the reason why it took a little bit of time to get it up and running. But once I got it um, basically finished, Literally, once I started marketing and advertising the home, I mean, I was getting calls out the wazoo. So literally, it didn't take, it took about a few days, literally under a week for me to even get multiple offers that I wanted on the home. 
Um, of course, you have to go through and go into your, do your back work. You know, you got to do your credit checks. You got to do your, make sure the person has employment and references and all that other type of thing. But it doesn't take long for people to actually start contacting you in terms of the home. Okay, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, do you teach people who are interested in getting into mobile homes? Yes, I do. I actually have a partner. Uh, me and her actually do do mobile home mentoring. Um, we offer a 30-day a um, um, to buy and sell your mobile homes within those 30-day um, time frame. We also have a program that we do offer that's extended of that um, because we find, we have found out actually in mentoring a lot of people, once they get into the mentorship, people do not have the time to go out there and do the weekly assignments that, you know, needs to be done um, all the way leading up to those whole entire, that whole entire month. So um, sometimes they're not able to fulfill the assignments due to work. A lot of them have nine to five jobs. People have families, um, things of that nature. So um, we just felt there was a lag in um, completing the necessary assignments um, to move them forward in actually purchasing the home or actually getting the home sold. So we have added on extended program where we will go out um, after you know your training, we will go out. We'll locate the mobile home for you because we know exactly you know how to do so. Um, so we'll locate the mobile home for you. After we locate the mobile home, we'll actually work with our handyman, our contractors to go ahead and get your mobile home uh, remodeled. After that, we'll also provide the advertising and marketing for you as well. So um, that's just an extension that we did with the mentorship, um, and those are more so for like really really busy people that cannot actually get in the field and do the work okay so they don't have to live in your location if no they don't right okay no they don't i'm actually um working with somebody right now who actually lives in california and oh. um they are going through the process <laughs> okay um can you share one of your life lessons with us life lessons <laughs> in mobile home investing or just in general <laughs> or in general something related to money or even love. Oh, life lessons and <laughs> love. We don't even want to talk about that, honey. Okay? <laughs> they, they, every, all you guys are on your own when it comes to love because I'm still trying to figure that out myself. Okay. I hear you. I hear in terms you. of I money, in terms of money, you know, a life lesson are really like because listen, when I was not, when I was working a corporate job, you know, um, and then on top of that, I don't have any children, you know, I'm not married. So, you know, my time and my leisure and my money, it, you know, it's, it's a little bit more free for me to play with, but, um, I was just all over the place, you know, um, and I didn't have any budget. Um, I, I was just everywhere, you know, spending money like recklessly. And my whole thing is when I got into business, um, and people need to know this, when you get into business, um, you're basically relying on yourself. You're no longer relying on somebody else to give you, you know, that income. So you really have to buckle down. Um, not only that, your finances have to really, really be in order. Sometimes you're seeing large amounts of money come in, coming in whatever, whatever industry you get into for your own business. And um, you have to be able to go to a financial advisor if you can't learn the budget yourself, or you have to um, go to somebody that can help you um, to, to keep track of your money and to make sure that you're not spending your money um, unnecessarily. Um, and that's what I learned because when, when you're in business, you're, listen, you gotta, you're making that money on your own and nobody's here to save you. You don't have a nine to five. You're not relying on a check, a weekly check or a bi-weekly check. So if you're just spending money frivolously, you're done. So when, if you're in business, that's one thing I can say, please, talk to a financial advisor, talk to somebody, go to the bank. I don't care who you get. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. A family, a family relative that knows, you know, about business and finances, but talk to somebody to help you um, along the lines of that. Okay. And um, I just have one more question, Cassie. Yes. Um, could you leave some words for somebody who's not doing well right now? They're in the Valley season and they, um, they need to hear some words from you. So they're, oh no. So they're just in a bad position right now. They're just in a tough spot. Um, I would say pretty much, you know, it's, it's, you're not going to be here forever. Um, we've all been in tough spots, you know, um, I've been in a tough spot, you know, um, and you're, you're never going to be in that same situation forever. You're eventually going to come out of it. You know, I don't know who everybody's faith is, but you know, I believe in the Lord and I know that he brings us out of things. 
at all times. You know, prayer is very vital um, into anything, but you're, but you just got to keep going. And that's my whole thing. I've gotten tough spots several times. And um, I just felt like if I gave up at those particular moments that I would never get to where I'm at now, I would never get this far. So um, the moment that you choose to give up, the moment that, you know, I mean, you'll never see what the future could have held for you. So I just feel like, listen, you're in a tough spot now. You're not going to be in a tough spot forever. And um, definitely um, prayer and um, just you moving forward will get you out of this. Okay, Cassie, sounds good. And where can people go to find you if they want to reach out to you? They can go to um, Instagram, um, Pink Porch Properties. Um, I'm mainly on all social media sites, same thing, Facebook. Or you can check me out at Casey Robinson or Pink Porch Properties as well. Okay, sounds good, Cassie. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you.